Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 live on Channel's Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. British Court gives Process and Industrial Development Limited permission to seize Nigerian assets worth $9 billion over failed agreement to build gas processing plant in Calabar. Federal government moves to appeal judgment. Embattled Shiite leader Ibrahim El Zagzaki and his wife Zinat returned to Nigeria after failing to undergo planned medical treatment in an Indian hospital. About 500 families displaced following heavy downpour in Ngamdu, a resettled community in Bronu State, previously sacked by insurgents. And Zimbabwe's main opposition party bows to pressure, calls off street protests as armed police fire tear gas to disperse crowd. For more information on our top stories and others, just go to our website, it's channelcv.com. YouTube.com forward slash channels web has videos of all our shows. An Ikeja magistrate's court in Lagos today ordered the remand of a 24-year-old woman in prison for allegedly abusing a child in a viral video. The gender unit of the state police command had arraigned the suspect, Onye Madike, before a magistrate on a two-count charge. The suspect is to be remanded in Kirikiri Prison as the case is adjourned till Wednesday, October the 9th. We have concluded our investigation. There are multiple count charges, you know, because there are a lot of, uh, there are quite a number of sections she contraven, uh, you know under the laws, three different courts, you know, put together. So, so this is a message that the state also is responsible to its tax of protecting these young ones because they are the future of our, our country. We must protect them from parents who go extreme, you know, and we, that is the reason why we have a unit dedicated to that. It's a situation that puts a sad taste, you know, in one's mouth. Uh, of course, uh, the facts you know, of the video speak for itself, but uh, it's a regrettable action. And as you can see, she's you know, certainly remorseful. You know, uh, so we just want to you know, uh, plead you know, with you know, the public, you know, plead with uh, the little boy who was offended, you know, uh, plead with you know, the international community. Barely three weeks after officials of the Nigerian Customs Service destroyed over 50 containers of tramadol and other drugs worth 7 billion naira across the western zone, another interception has been made by the agency in Lagos. Containers of tramadol and other drugs estimated to be worth 5 billion naira were alleged to have been moved during the recent Eid al Kabil celebration. The spokesperson for the service, Joseph Attar, says the smugglers attempted to take advantage of the holidays to perpetrate their crime. He was speaking to journalists at the Customs Training College in Lagos. And let's move over to our Abuja studio for more stories. And Ibrahim Adra is standing by. Hello, Ibrahim. Hello, Melinda. Now let's begin with this report of about 500 households in Gamdu village of Kaga local government area of Borno State that have been displaced by flood. The flood occurred following a heavy downpour on Wednesday night, which lasted for about 12 hours, leaving most part of the town heavily flooded. The displaced villagers are now living in the only primary school of the town, which is on higher ground. Ngamdu, which is located along the Maiduguri Damatri Expressway, is one of the villages displaced in the heat of the insurgency. The state governor, Baba Gana Zulu, visits the community where he sympathized with the villagers and assured them that he has taken note of their needs, which, according to him, would be addressed immediately. The night of Wednesday, August the 14th, is when the people of Ngamdu village in Konduga local government area of Borno State will not forget in a hurry. It was this night that about 500 families were forced out of their homes by flood, a result of a heavy downpour. Although no life was lost, residents were left with relics of collapsed buildings, submerged roads and culverts. 
all evidence of a rain that lasted 12 hours. Left with no other place to go, these displaced people in their numbers now live in the only primary school in the town, which is on a higher plane. Following this development, the governor of Bono State, Baba Gana Umara Zulum, visited the community to sympathize with the people and assured them that Saka will come their way soon. Uh, workers from the Ministry of Reconstruction, Rehabilitation and Resettlement shall be dispatched to this town so that they shall start constructing temporary shelters immediately. While the officials of the Ministry of Works, after the rainy season, government shall look into the possibility of constructing permanent structures in an essentially flat area where there will be no problems of flooding. With about 500 households displaced by floods, help is needed in the area for relief as well as medical care to curtail any outbreak of waterborne diseases and the people hope that the Borneo State Emergency Management Agency acts fast as a stitch in time saves nine. And back here in Abuja, some indigents of Taraba and Benue states are holding a counter-protest to an earlier one organized by the Tif Youth Council, during which some politicians in both states were accused of fueling the communal crisis in Taraba state. The protesters, who are mainly of the Jukung extraction, are calling on leaders from both sides to dialogue rather than sponsor groups who will add more fuel to existing crisis. On Wednesday, August the 14th, protesters under the aegis of Tief Youths Council protested against the killings resulting from the communal clashes between the Tief and Jukuns in Taraba State. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. The protesters accused some politicians of allowing the crisis to fester. We are asking the governor of Taraba State, as the chief security officer of Taraba State, to do the needful. Two days after that protest, a counter protest led by some Taraba and Benu State indigents is holding at the same venue. The group describes the accusation of the Taraba state governor and other politicians in the state as unpatriotic. The governor, His Excellency Architect Darius Dixon Ishaku, has been on his toes trying to see to the return of peace in the state. He has had several meetings with the governor of Benue state. He has set up a high powered committee to look into the issues. He has held a meeting with the Aku Uka and the Totif at the Federal University of Ukari. The war between Tif and Jukun has been an historical one. It always comes once in a decade, one and go. But this one, it's so porous that the criminals, as I've said, have hijacked it. And we are trying to see how we can trace them and make sure our place have peace. Rather than continue in the blame game, the group is calling on all political leaders from the two states to find solutions to the crisis. We are calling on the federal government, we are calling on President Buhari, and we are calling on all our leaders, please, enough of this crisis. We have been quiet for too long. The age-long communal clash between the Jukuns and Tiv in Taraba State has led to the killings of dozens of citizens. And with a new dimension that the crisis has taken, which is involving the federal university in Wukari, concerns Nigerians believe that there is an urgent need for the government to address the crisis once and for all. Well, many thanks, Terry. Now, some residents of Gindinwa community in Ibi local government area of Taraba State have been giving their own accounts of the events that led to the death of three policemen and a civilian killed by some soldiers. The incident, which occurred on August the 6th, is one that residents of the community will not forget in a hurry. In this report, our correspondent revisited the scene of the event to get eyewitness accounts from residents. 
This is Gideon Wire community in Ibi local governed area of Taraba State, where three officers of the Nigerian police force were allegedly killed by soldiers of the 93 Battalion, Takum. It's a border community that shares boundaries with Bukhari local government area. It's one of those incidents that stays with those who witnessed it for a long time, like some of the residents who opened up to reporters about what happened on August the 6th. That very day we were thinking that maybe it is our enemies that came. Because everybody was totally to stop. So we hear this gun shooting and then this gun was not was not start here, started at from Ibi. So they start shooting from that area to this our area. We just hear this thing, uh, the machines and the motor, they were just land, they were just coming in masses like this. When they came after that, then the motor go and fall there. Then we're hearing gun there, shooting, uh, facing themselves. Then after that, the gun when we are just quietly then we can when we are coming then we ask they say they were saying that it's kidnapper kidnapper they go and keep you go and kidnap uh, somebody at eb they want to go with him then the, the son of the community they think of is a kidnapper then from there then they would they just go there according to the village head of uh, getting wire no, the people the now live in perpetual is. fear forcing oh, yes. a number of residents to move away. The, the, fear, the fear of Anona, they don't know what will come out of it. That's the reality. Some are relocating. The community are always in fear, seeing the military personnel. This is where the alleged kidnapped suspect, Hamisu Bala, was picked up by the slain security operatives. Meanwhile, some families of the slain policemen have been asking for justice while committees have been set up by the police and Nigerian army to investigate the incident. And when the news at 10 returns, Ekiti State is set to tap into opportunities in the capital market as Governor Karadi Fayami confirms public offering of state-owned enterprises. I'll be in our business news and police in Zimbabwe disperse opposition protesters with tear gas. That will be coming from our London Bureau in Around the World in Five. Do join us again.